we, we have requested $60 million from the city, $120 million from the state, uh, $130 million in, in uh, concessions from, from labor. Secretaries, guidance counselors, assistant principals, extracurricular activities, art and music, noontime aides who actually supervise students while they're at lunch, athletics, those are all things that we will not have the ability to afford if we're moving forward with school-based budgets based on a $304 million hole. So one of the things in Philadelphia is that we're seeing sort of a perfect storm about all these forces that are kind of interacting with public education. You have a governor who really has been very explicit about where public education stands, that the state investment into public schools has gone from 44% to about 32%, and municipalities all across the state of Pennsylvania have seen increased property taxes, reduction of services, and the layoffs of personnel. I don't know what the likelihood of um, um, receiving money from the state will be. I don't know the likelihood of receiving money from the city. However, here's what I do know. I do know that we, we will be unable to provide what I, what I would deem an adequate education for the, for the children of this city. I have never been more frightened than this year about the possibility of not seeing schools open right after Labor Day. The lack of leadership in Harrisburg and in City Hall in terms of the funding is very, very frightening. A week ago, Superintendent William Height said Philadelphia Public Schools could not safely open on September 9th without a firm commitment of $50 million. I am today directing the City Finance Director, the City Treasurer, and the City Budget Director to begin immediately to taking the steps necessary to conduct a city borrowing on behalf of the School District of Philadelphia in the amount of $50 million. There's $200 million of real estate available, right, for sale, and you go out and borrow $50 million. I mean, this is from a fiscal perspective, um, just to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. The mayor, city council, the governor, they're obsessed with numbers. This is really a conversation about what is the lowest possible number we can give you? What is the lowest possible, barest minimum that we can get by to keep schools open? We're only going to lose if we talk about numbers, the lowest number possible, the most minimum number possible. And it's really got to be about what are we guaranteeing? Are you telling me that you're willing to open a school without an assistant principal, with one secretary, no full-time nurse, no full-time guidance counselor, and the maximum number of students you can cram into a classroom. When I was in my country, they say in America, everything is free in school. I was thinking it's going to be like, I will get everything I need in school, and I will get as many counselors I can have. They're very different now, because when I, before when I come, they have like, five council and I can talk to all of them they help me but now they say only one you're going to have it's going to be difficult when I need to get my college application done um, to get uh, um, apply for scholarships to know when I need to take the SAT stuff mm -hmm. I need a lot of stuff to do to do my senior project and council will help me to get paper done uh, it's gonna be affect me because there's going to be only one, and this counselor needs to help all the students. I am one of 16 counselors that cover 120 schools and 48,000 students. When school counselors are forced to work in situations or abide by policies that do not reflect the ethics of the profession, the school counselor works responsibly to the correct channels to try and remedy the condition, which is why I am here and I will continue to come here. 
really, I guess, at the heart of a lot of this is the question of what is our commitment to public education? Will we give equality of opportunity to young children in the poorest, largest city in the U.S., or are we going to strip all those resources away and give them to somebody else? Tell me one, I want everyone to give me one idea, one, one big thing that you'd like me to do related to education. It used to be a bad school, but now we're Memphis State Academy, and now we're striving for the best. Like, I would wish that every school was like that, not just some schools. So every school and everybody and every school can have what we have. For young people in schools these days, like, the situation around the schools just feels enormous. It is a huge and enormous, and it's a grotesque and disgraceful burden that families have to share to pick up, like, the failures of our political leadership. Students are fed up with the budget cuts, and I'm taking so much away from us. So that's why we are protesting. Um, I see that changes, like overcrowded classes. We have students sitting on heaters and sitting on their book bags in class. We're going to be the true voice of of Philadelphia, and and we need to do that because if it's not going to be us, it's going to be somebody else. I'm Governor Tom Corbett. You all may know me as Mayor Michael Nutter. I'm city council. Power can also break. Oppressive forces are not unified. Voices of our communities can stand up. We come together to make the person that try to flush our education like a toilet, to show them that we care about school. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it. Mm -hmm.